back to Friday Night Lights. We've got plenty more high school football to get to, right, Mike? No question about it. We aren't, we aren't done. We're just getting started yeah. here. It's our second segment, and we're going to hand it off to the third member of our crew. Let's introduce you to Cameron Up. Once again, take it away, Cameron. Yeah, thanks, guys. Let's head out to West County this evening, where both Fairview and Northwestern were at home to begin the 2024 season. At Fairview, Mark Soboleski's Tigers taking on Slippery Rock. And that Fairview student section is fired up for the start of football. Start of the second half, Slippery Rock trying to slip screen, but Avilio Burgos is in the backfield to blow it up for a loss. Rockets forced to punt. Vincent Campoli in his first athletic competition since a knee injury. He keeps it on the read option. He's got room to run. Gets the first down before being pushed out of bounds. Campoli completes five of six passes for 59 yards and a touchdown. Later in the drive, the give is to Joshua Lockett. That O-line parts the Red Sea and Lockett walks in virtually untouched for the touchdown. This one was all fair view from start to finish. They roll tonight 35 to nothing. And Albion Northwestern welcoming Lakeview tonight for their opener. First drive of the game, Lakeview is trying to end around, but there's a whole pack of Wildcats there to make the tackle for the loss. The Pilots would be forced to punt. Later in the first, Braden Smith escapes the pocket to his left. He decides to tuck it and run. He's finally run out of bounds, but that's going to be good enough for a first down. A few plays later, more athleticism from Swift. This time rolling to his right. He's got Dalton Huff wide open for the touchdown. Extra point makes it 7-0 Northwestern. Second quarter now, late. Leighton Zacherl picks up the botch snap. He takes off on the draw. He almost loses it again, but he hangs on for the first down. Talk about hot potato. Later, Zach Earl finds Skiles on the slant just short of the goal line, but it's first and goal from the one for Skiles. He punches it in on the next play. No problem. Ensuing two-point conversion was good. That gives Lakeview an 8-7 lead. They go on to win this one, 32-26. Congratulations to Blake Reddick on his first win at Lakeview. That's it for me, guys. Let's send it back over to you. Great stuff, Karen, out of West County. All right, more season openers. Let's go to Iroquois High School, where Northeast is taking on Grove City, while the field turf project is nearing completion out there at Pickerland. In the first, no score. Great pickers go to the air. Bryson Galloway hits Carter Crozier, who comes up with a nice toe-tap catch on the sideline for a first down. Drive with stall. Later in the first half, Grove City with the ball. Lucas McCready drops back to pass. He's picked off. Kyler C. coming up with a long return. Northeast in business in the red zone, but they get no points out of the takeaway. Still scoreless in the second. McCready goes to the air, dials one up down the field. Clayton Martin hauls it in for GC in Northeast Territory. Same drive, Jackson Wilson totes the rock, finds the end zone. 7-0 Grove City, the only points of the first half. Eagles beat Northeast 21 to nothing in Chris Krahowski's debut as head coach for the Pickers. John Anger, his first game as head coach at Harbor Creek Huskies home for Oil City. 6-6 game at the half, and for the Oilers, Cole Finley rolling out, finding Devon Griffin in the flat. Oil City first down as he slides. Later in the drive, OC knocking on the door in the red zone, but here on fourth down and five, it's an incomplete pass. Huskies defense holds, and they take over. Late in the third, Harbor Creek now on offense. Quarterback Heath Betza, the senior, steps up, evades the pressure, and he's going to run for the first down out of bounds. Nice pick up there. Same drive, but we head to the fourth going the other way. Betza back to pass, delivers down the left sideline, on the money for Gavin Zillman. Huge first down for the Huskies. They were methodical later on in the drive. Less than seven minutes to play. Tobias Vehi finds the end zone for what turns out to be the winning touchdown. He ran 17 times for 76 yards. Harbor Creek in a defensive battle. Beats Oil City 13-6. Congrats to Coach John Anger on his first win as head coach of the Huskies. Let's hit some area scores around District 10, other places. General McLean falls in a shootout at Newcastle 49-47. It's Sharpsville beating Girard 32-23. Seneca beats Sagertown 35-7. Iroquois all over Cochranton 40-6. Maplewood blanks Union City 21-0. Reynolds blanks Eisenhower 15-0. Conneaut beats Warren 61-0 and Wilmington over Greenville 28-7. As for tomorrow, just three games in District 10 going on. Cambridge Springs visits Kennedy Catholic at 1 in the afternoon in Hermitage. Franklin hosts Mercer and Hickory visits Farrell 
There's your high school football week one recap in the bag. But plenty more football to talk about, Ashley. Absolutely. And in the NFL preseason, teams are wrapping up things this weekend, including the Steelers on the road in Detroit. No doubt. It's been an intriguing run so far, and that includes arguably the most interesting quarterback battle in the NFL that's still ongoing. Not an easy task for head coach Mike Tomlin and company. It's been a battle to see who will secure that starting quarterback spot for the black and gold. Head coach Mike Tomlin announced that Russell Wilson will lead the way on Saturday. Justin Fields says he tries not to think about the internal competition and will continue to work hard regardless. I mean, I, I think I've shown, you know, uh, what I can do. Um, I think, you know, the time that I did have with the ones practicing in training camp, I think that went well. I think we, we grew a lot each and every day, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's, 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 it's not up to me. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to come in here every day, each and every day, the same person, uh, being being a leader. Tomlin says that they're trying to get the best of both worlds. They want their younger players to get more experience, but he's also utilizing this final game to mimic week one of the regular season. Um, this is our third preseason game, and historically the third preseason game has been a dry rehearsal, if you will, um, for the regulars, and, and, it, and we have that mentality. That's why we did the simulation work week. But also it has some, you know, some characteristics of the, of the old fourth preseason game because it's the last opportunity uh, for some men to state a case for themselves, to find, to find jobs, to define roles, to show what they're capable of. That said, Tomlin plans to use all healthy players on Saturday, but says they'll move on from their regulars relatively quickly to provide an opportunity for others. Rookie cornerback Beanie Bishop still working through an undisclosed injury that kept him on the sidelines during the Steelers' second preseason game. I feel like I always got something to prove every time I go out there, even if it's practice or a game, you know, playing with a chip on my shoulder because a lot of people say I shouldn't be here. So, you know, I just go out there and try to prove that, you know, I belong, belong here too as well. The Steelers hit the road for their final preseason game against the Detroit Lions. Kickoffs at 1 o'clock at Ford Field. Still to come, we'll wrap up the show with our play of the night.